They get the queen, what they do, they'll go like this, boom! And look, a big bubble, a big ball of red paint will just cover and kill your queen. I've gathered up everything that you need to make a bee inspection. Look at this, it's crazy. You may be thinking, I don't need all of that stuff to make an inspection. You do, it's gonna be a bonus at the end that I think is the most important, but let's get right into it. Item number one, protect your head. So you need a hat or a veil or a bee suit or something like that. And then item number two goes right along with that. You need some gloves to protect your hands when you're working your bees. These are some that you've seen me use. They're chemical resistant gloves. I wouldn't say they're sting proof, but I've never been stung through those gloves. And these are some that you've seen me make a lot of videos with. They work really well too. And for me, they're sting proof. I've never been stung through them, but I can't promise that. I'll leave links in the description below for these items if you're crazy about getting those. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need something that will allow you to see the eggs. Now, if you're farsighted like I am, you're gonna need a pair of readers so you can look down in those cells and get something very powerful. If you're tinkering around with a 1.5 to help you read, that is good for reading, sure. But if you wanna really magnify to see those tiny little eggs, get a 3.5. Just wear them for your bee inspection. It'll make those little eggs look like huge alligators. So wear something that can help you see eggs. That's important as well. Now you need a bee brush. You oftentimes do your inspection and you never really think, I need a bee brush, what for? When would I ever need to be brush bees around? Oh my gosh, I've been in an inspection so many times where I forgot to take a bee brush and I'm using grass, I'm using a piece of paper to move bees around. Sometimes bees are stuck on the outside of the hive or something, you wanna brush them back in. Or when you put your boxes back together, you wanna brush them off the uh, edge of the box so when you put your next box on, you don't hear that crunching sound of bees being murdered. So brush them off, take a bee brush with you. And you always wanna take a hive tool with you. This is my all, I love this hive tool. <laughs> it is, well, look at it, it's so filthy, but it is the go-to hive tool. It is a J-hook hive tool, helps me manipulate the frames, get them out of there, and I've, I've narrowed this down. I, I original uh, out-of-the-box hive tool J-hook will, it, it just doesn't work well. I have to put this on the grinder, make this as narrow as possible. But this is a J-hook. It only, only downside about a J-hook, very hard to smash, small hive beetle with it. I mean, you have to be exact to smack and kill a small hive beetle with this thing. Um, a hive tool that really works well for smashing is the old time traditional hive tool with the little curve on the end, look at that. And that way you can just smash a small hive beetle. That works so well. The next item that is probably the second most important item is the smoker. Look at this, I got, I got a little wood thing here to put it out at the end. A lot of you tell me, oh, you should buy a cork and this cork works great. You know, a stick of wood like that, I whittled on it, it works fine. It helps put the smoker out when I'm done. So you'll need your smoker. Not only do you need a smoker, but you need something to start your smoker with. I use this crepe paper, it starts the fire. Always start in the bottom of your smoker and then you can add your smoker fuel. But this is important to take this in case your smoker goes out during your inspection. You wanna have plenty of this. Sometimes you have to restart the smoker. I don't care how good of a beekeeper you are, look, the smoker can go out. So have this ready to restart it and that will help you so much. In addition to the crepe paper to help start the fire, you need burlap. This is my go-to material when I'm working bees. And if you've seen me use my smoker over and over again, this is what's inside of it. Now I buy these on Amazon. I'll leave links to all these things in the description below. These are big burlap food grade uh, actual bags, burlap bags. Um, and so what I do with these is I cut them down to fit, basically fit within my smoker. You can cut them with a utility knife or scissors, but I usually cut my pieces about this big and then I roll it up after I start it and I just insert it and puff it and get it going good. This burlap will burn so nicely and make so much smoke. It's imperative that you just focus on burlap. It's been used by beekeepers forever. And so it's easy to buy. I'll leave links in the description below where you can get the food grade quality. You don't have to worry about, I used to burn blue jeans. Everybody says blue jeans are bad. They have blue dye in them. They're bad for your bees. But I've always thought, you know, after I 
have worn out my blue jeans, <laughs> there's no more dye in it, I assure you. Now, some other things you're gonna need when you go out to the, do your first bee inspection is you're gonna need, um, this is gonna be an extra item. I'm gonna not, I'm just gonna throw this in there. I always have one in my pocket. Look at that. Now this year, the color is red, 2023, but you're gonna need something if you want to mark your queen. So take that with you. I know you may be thinking, that's silly, David. I don't need to, my queen's already marked or I don't need to mark her, I don't wanna mark her. You may change your mind. Your red queen may have flown off with a swarm and now you're left with a virgin queen that just got, maybe she's not virgin, she just got mated, but now you need to mark a new queen. Handy to have in your pocket at all times. Wherever I go, even when I'm not working bee bees, I usually have this in my pocket, which is strange, but always take a marking pen. That's a good thing to have. Now, another thing that you'll wanna do is stay hydrated. When we work bees in the summertime, it's hot outside. The hotter it is, the more you're gonna sweat inside that gigantically thick canvas bee suit under a hood. And so it's important to take something, and what I prefer is body armor. I'm not sponsored by body armor. This is not a sponsored ad or anything like that for any of these products. I'm just telling you what I use. And this has a lot of good minerals in it, and I've found it to be the best. I used to use Gatorade, all that stuff, but I usually prefer these. This is what I use when I go on my bike rides, um, and I really do get replenished and stay strong when I use body armor. This stuff you can buy at every little gas station there is, Sam's Club, Walmart, you can pick this up anywhere at your grocery store. Now, look at this. You always wanna start your fire with something like this in your smoker. Always have this with you. Test it, because if you're like me, you leave it out in the rain and it doesn't really work too good for a while, but always test it. Make sure you, before you light your smoker that this is gonna work in case you have to restart your smoker. You gotta take this with you out to the bee yard, the fire starting stick. So important to have that with you as well. Now, I've got a few more items to share. Before I share these uh, last few items, I want to encourage you to please subscribe. I love you guys so much. You're blowing up my channel, which I am so thankful for. As you can tell, I'm getting older by my face and my hair. <laughs> it's a privilege to live long enough to be old, absolutely. But I'm having to reduce the amount of time I go out there and spend 20 hours a day working beehives. And so some of the money that I used to make off killing myself out in the bee yard, I hope to make a little bit of that off of YouTube. So if you can subscribe and help an old man out, I would appreciate it. Okay, here's some more things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a pocket knife. Now you might think, why would I ever need a pocket knife? Oh my gosh, you may take this out to the bee yard and realize, oh shoot, I forgot to cut a piece where it would fit in my smoker. There's no way you're gonna cram this in your smoker. So always take a pocket knife. You might find something like this may have a wrapper on it that you just can't get off. Take your pocket knife and rip it off. You may find something in the hive itself that's going to require a pocket knife, something you need to cut, a piece of tape that you put on there. Something is going to need to be cut. Always take a pocket knife with you. That's what my dad always taught me, and so I'm just do what my dad told me. Now, two more things are really cool to take. You're gonna love me for this. All right, you're gonna love this. You're gonna be like, I never thought of that. That makes total sense. A queen cage with a queen cap. Now, why this is so important, and I've shown you guys this in many of my videos. Sometimes I'm out there working my bees, and I decide that I've got a lot of major work to do to all these frames, and you know what? As a master beekeeper, somebody that's been keeping bees since the early 90s, I've accidentally killed a queen or two. Admission, okay, I've done it. I've done it, I've made a mistake. There it is, I've admitted that I've made a mistake. <laughs> As I always say in my beekeeping videos pretty often, just because I'm a certified master beekeeper doesn't mean I don't think I know everything. I think there's far better beekeepers than me. I think there's people that are more skilled than I am. It just means that I have taken tests and I've completed my certification. I've spent a long time learning bees, but I don't know everything, okay? I'm not bragging when I say I'm an EAS certified master beekeeper. I'm just saying I know some stuff, but I don't know it all. But one of the things I do know is when I take this with me, it is so helpful because sometimes I don't want to accidentally kill my queen. And so what I do is I catch my queen and I pick her up, I put her 
by her uh, back wings. I'll pick her up head first into this little hole in the queen cage right here, and she will just walk in. I will cover her up. I will put a cap on it, and now I've got my queen safely in here. I'll put her in my pocket, is usually what I do, or my bee suit pocket. Now I can work my hive and not worrying about killing my queen when I'm doing a major, major inspection where I'm handling all the frames, moving frames around, you know, a chance of putting frames outside the hive. She may walk off. When I have her in here, that's so important. Now, I may not need to do this on smaller inspections where I'm just looking for eggs. I'm not really manipulating a lot of frames. I'm not worried about it. Talking about the times, maybe when you're going to do an alcohol wash, for example, to test for mites, why not see the queen, put her in here just in case you think you know where she's at, and all at once she's swimming in alcohol. Uh, queens don't do well in a pool of alcohol. So the other thing that's queen related that you may want to take with you into the bee yard is this little gadget here. Now I have these available on our website. They do come, I think ours are square. I just grabbed the round one here. But this is a way that you can isolate your queen when you see her walking around. Why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes as I just described, you don't want her to get away from you and get somewhere where you don't want her. And so you just find her and push this gently into the comb with her under this. And when she's under this, then she is safely uh, stowed away here uh, for whatever reason. Now, many of you know that I suggest you break the queen's brood cycle in the months, July, August, September, uh, for a week. And that way you cut down on the mites by breaking the queen's brood cycle, you break the mites brood cycle. These things are great for that. Another little thing I've noticed about this that I've used it a few times and it kind of worked decently is that I'll find the queen that's not marked and I'll just push this down into the uh, comb and I can generally push it far enough where it sort of traps her and now her thorax is over or under one of these little holes and then I can take my marking pen and then I can just mark her with the marking pen. Now wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, listen. I'm gonna give you one of the most fascinating tips about marking pens. This is a brand new one. The tip is white. This mistake is made by so many beekeepers that it makes them cry, and I'm gonna show you how to avoid crying. All right, let me use something here, a piece of wood. Now, you gotta prime these. So you're gonna go like this, keep looking. Now the red paint has made its way down. A lot of beekeepers make the mistake is once they get a lot of red paint, they get the queen, what they'll do, they'll go like this, boom, and look, a big bubble, a big ball of red paint will just cover and kill your queen. That's bad. What you wanna do when you prime this, you wanna test it. Do you see the different colors here? There's white and blue and red. Those are years that I use this to test this. In other words, I sort of keep going like this until I figure I got the right amount of ink or paint on the tip. Now at that point, I'm gonna give you another tip that really is helpful too. Don't mark your queen with the pen pointing down. That will allow you to make a mistake. It allows any paint that's on there to run down. I gotta get this paint off of here. What you wanna do when you mark your queen is hold her up if it's possible and mark it mark her like this by marking her that way you're not going to disperse release a lot of paint onto her at one time isn't that a great tip wow i don't know what to do with all these tips you guys are getting it's absolutely remarkable now i've promised to share with you the most important thing i think to take to the bee yard and that is my inspection guide look at this i don't know how many pages it consists of because i keep adding to it this is the 2023 beekeeping inspection guide that i have created now i want to tell you right up front it's gonna cost not too much, but you check it out on our website. It, you can download it. It's a downloadable inspection guide, and it is a PDF file that you can print off like I did, and look at this. You can put it in your a notebook or something, and then take it out to the bee yard with you. Um, this is the one that has a checklist on it, and so it helps you know what to take. All the things that I've mentioned here are in the checklist, so you can sit here and go, okay, I got that, got that. I don't know if you're my age or not, or older, 
but I have to have a lot of checklists <laughs> because I'll forget something. Imagine that, right? But there are, this is the one that I used in one of my previous videos where I showed you guys how you can use it to really calculate not only what is going on in your hive, but to do an inspection with a purpose and know what to do next time that you get into your beehive. Um, so there's a lot of checks and uh, marks in here, especially I like this section here where it talks about what you should look for. How many frames of eggs do you see? How many frames of larvae do you see? And then it just tells you what you should do once you see this. There's things about mite tests. I've updated this on how to test for mites in here as well. But anyway, there's quite a few pages in here. I think it's like 15 or 16 pages. It's fun to take this to the bee yard with you. I'll leave a link in the description below. And once you get it, print it off, put it in a notebook, take it with you to do all your hive inspections. Now, if you have everything you need to do your inspection, let me show you this video right here. Follow me over here because I'll walk through an inspection with you, show you what to look for. See you over there.